Now, Lisboa is not as old as Astra, so it will be the 13th edi edition this year. And it's, a, it's quite big. It's, uh, oh, there are two big film festivals in Portugal, and it's one of them. So it's quite important, and it was very important in the moment that it was founded, because in that time, in those times, documentary was seen as a kind of sub-product of television and Doc Lisboa appears uh, to defend documentary as a cinema form and as a cinema language also. And also because there were no public fundings for documentary cinema in those times. So it was created by the Documentary Association in Portugal, also to fight for the legitima legitimation of those fundings. Nowadays it changed a lot, of course, as documentary also changed. And so it's a festival that it explores, mainly it explores a lot the, um, the borders and the new ways that documentary filmmakings are uh, acquiring and, and building up. Uh, it's quite broad, we have a lot of sections and each section has a specific uh, task from films related to music and performative arts to films related to fiction and uh, also a uh, huge historical um, program. We always have at least two retrospectives. This year also a focus. It's a festival that is very much alive. Uh, it's changing a lot every year. We, we experiment and we like to do that. We experiment new ways of programming and new ways of communicating the films with the audience. and. And it's been quite well. I mean, the audience is, we always have around 26,000 people. From what I've seen, I would say that all the films have a very strong political standard statement, uh, all of them, and not from the easy side of the political um, discussions. So, yeah, I would say that all of them, not in a pamphletary way, not in an easy way, but all of them touch difficult issues and touch them through not obvious forms, through some very subtle strategies, but, uh, but all of them, yeah, they, 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 they can give very interesting debates about the world today. Programming is a very much an intuitive uh, task also, so it depends on the sections. But if you want to talk about competition, for instance, it has to do with uh, a balance between the present, so what are the present uh, main concerns and main, main issues, and also the present of the country where we are doing the festival, so Portugal in this case. We don't defend uh, only strong films, you know, only perfect films. We like to program fragile films, films that are taking risks. Sometimes they can't reach the perfection with that, but they give you something that allows you to think about cinema. So it's not just, it's not a subject-oriented film festival. So it's not just about the issues, it's also about, about how did the filmmakers rethink their their practice as artists to to touch those people or those landscapes or those issues or the, those universes and by doing that how do they propose you a reflection on cinema in a more general way it's very intuitive in the sense that it's like composing a meal or like composing a bouquet of flowers, you know, you, you take one and then another and then another and then suddenly you see forms appearing, you see tensions, you see textures appearing and you add some elements to, to somehow build up a map of the world and of cinema today and a map that is not stable and, and classifying the world but on the contrary that is raising questions all the time. For instance, this year when we looked at the competition in the end, we realized that we had been spending the months before, all these months before programming films that were taking many classical strategies of documentary and reversing them. So all the, pro the competitions in Doc Lisboa this year 
allow you to really question what is documentary today, for instance. But we, this was not a concept in the beginning. This was not a strategy that we decided. It was something that happened naturally in our own personal quests, you know. I'm totally uh, against this idea that uh, there is a strict barrier between documentary and fiction and experimental. Actually, I don't like to, to define genres. And uh, if you look at my at Doc Lisboa's catalog, you have many fictions programmed there, especially on the retrospectives, but you never see written on the catalog fiction or documentary or experimental or animation. We never do that. So I don't know if we are post-genre or pre-genre, but we don't like this definition. At the same time, I know that there is a matrix in uh, these festivals, these so-called documentary film festivals, which is we are looking for the specific connections between filmmaking and reality. And these connections can appear in many different ways. They can appear with fiction strategies, they can appear with formalist approaches where you don't see a person or you don't hear a testimony or you don't use the typical strategies of documentary. But each film that we program is somehow connected to a certain uh, connection, strong connection to reality, uh, to a time and a place. I'm very uncomfortable actually defining this and if I use the word documentary it's more for laziness and for comfort in the sense that I need to communicate something more than really a theoretical point of view about this because I'm really, if I would be totally radical in my, point of, in my standard, I would say that uh, yeah, that cinema is cinema and each author has his own proposal and that we have to look at them as singular things and not as a, a whole uh, norm about filmmaking. I think today when you see one film you are forced to take a step aside outside of your preconceived scale of, of uh, what it is the language of documentary filmmaking. So you have to be very careful uh, when you, for instance today when you see a film that uses for instance interviews and you immediately connect that to, to, to the, one of the typical strategies of documentary and television, but you have to be very careful today because, for instance, you see many, many really interesting films today that use interviews in a totally different way. I mean, look at Wang Bing, for instance, or other filmmakers, use interviews in a totally different way, and it looks traditional, it looks orthodox even, and it's not at all because it's different in the time scale, it's different in the way they, 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 they connect to the characters, it's different in the way they edit the conversations and they use the information, so it's a totally different way of... I think it's much more free today in this sense, that all the, the, the strategies are available and they are used uh, under the rules of each film and not under the rules of a standard uh, point of view of what it is documentary filmmaking. And I think this is very healthy, actually. I think it's, um, it's very healthy towards the market because uh, there was a very oppressive, I would say, market for documentary filmmaking uh, lead by, led by televisions and led by commissioning editors, uh, which was not uh, serving the, the, the work of the authors at all. Uh, I know what I'm saying now is very uh, uncomfortable for a lot of uh, people and institutions, but it's true. And so also with the new forms of distribution, with VOD, with uh, the new festivals, small film festivals like Astra, like Yihlava, like uh, Doc Lisboa, like, I don't know, Fid Marseille, etc new smaller film festivals that came out and that suddenly were taking a standards about uh, independent, authoral, uh, maybe poorer documentary filmmaking, but they were taking a standard and they got together on it 
uh, suddenly this, this whole panorama of filmmaking here changed. And so today it's very difficult to talk about, um, it's really difficult to, to, to classify a film in a, in a definite way, which is really interesting, finally. Because uh, I don't feel, I don't think that cinema should contribute to norms, even if they are alternative. I think she, cinema should contribute to question the norms and to, to, to reverse our preconceived ideas about the world and about cinema itself. Yesterday, uh, there was a, a very important filmmaker, Chantal Ackerman, died. She changed the history of documentary filmmaking before we, we even saw it, you know? She changed the history in the 70s. <laughs> and even today when we look at her work, it's so difficult for us to, to classify what it is, no? And she used to say that when I put the camera in front of something, it's fiction happening, even if it's a, a landscape. Because it's cinema looking at the world, you know? It's about representation, it's about a singular personal connection to, to, to the reality. There is a sentence that I love from a scientist about the philosophy of science. He says that ornithology is, uh, I mean, the, the philosophy of science is so important to science as ornithology is to birds. So the, the documentary is so important to the world as ornithology is to birds. The world doesn't need documentaries in the sense that it exists anyway. The errors, the, the miseries, the happiness of the world exists anyway. So I think that's the main political uh, instrument of filmmaking, and not just documentary. It's the fact that it's useless. It just exists because we want it to. So it's an act of freedom. And that's the main thing about it, no? That uh, we don't need films, but we do them anyway. And we do them because we want to do them, because we desire to, to, to look at the world in this way and through these instruments and to share this with people because nobody does a film for himself. Everyone does a film to share, no? To, to someone. It's about uh, the, another C, someone that we are, maybe that we don't know about, but we are addressing to him or her or them. So the advantages of cinema today, and I, I, I would say any cinema, is to the fact that, but I think anything in arts, no? That uh, when you are creating something, because you actually desire to do this, uh, you are touching someone that you don't know about and somehow changing something, even if it's a little perception of the world. So it's building up communities and communities that do not uh, depend on territorial identities or on cultural uh, identification, they depend on sensibility and, and on, yeah, on sensibility. So it's the most uncontrollable uh, community that you can have, no? For instance, look at Astra Film Festival. I'm sure that uh, Sibiu as a city Look, looks completely different uh, for a spectator of Astra Film Festival when the festival exists or, or when it doesn't exist. Maybe they don't come to Talia every day in the morning or in the afternoon when the festival doesn't exist. So suddenly the city changes completely. And this is political because uh, you, you, you achieve a perception of your own community that you don't have nowadays, uh, usually. So I think the main advantage is the fact that it's not about uh, a use, being useful, being productive, being uh, uh, pertinent. It's about being free and desiring, 